Space debris is affecting in particular ESA missions in low Earth orbit because these orbits are the most densely populated. ERS-2 and Envisat are just flying at the most critical altitude and this is also the altitudes where the past co collisions have been taking place. So we have to make sure that, that our own satellites do not produce additional debris. Uh, that we do by uh, implementing the mitigation measures that ESA has defined and made applicable for ESA missions uh, in April uh, 2008. And that means for future space missions we would have to make sure that um, we limit the lifetime, the orbital lifetime of our satellites uh, to 25 years in the low Earth orbit region. And for geostationary satellites we would have to reorbit them into a graveyard orbit. We would have to passivate our objects in order to make sure that we do not have accidental explosions and we would have to do collision avoidance, which we actually already do for Envisat and ERS-2. That means we need to monitor conjunctions and fly avoidance maneuvers if necessary. When the shuttle goes to the station, uh, we'll dock and then we'll turn the entire station shuttle stack backwards. For most of the mission, we'll fly that backwards, which reduces the risk to the high temperature areas, the thermal protection system on the shuttle, so it greatly reduces the risk for loss of vehicle for the shuttle. It slightly increases the risk to the station, but at the end of the mission it will turn around, uh, fly normally, and uh, the station goes back to normal and you know the shuttle will depart. The overall risk is much, much lower that way. Uh, you know, the, the risk increase with station is more than offset with the risk de decrease with the shuttle. And uh, we, you know, we worked with the international partners to make sure that everybody was aware of this change and why. ESA is starting a very important new activity, which is called the Space Situational Awareness, or SSA, program. And this SSA program uh, comprises uh, several important domains, such as space surveillance, including also space debris, space weather and near-Earth objects. So the principles which have been taken to, uh, to implement this program during these, uh, these three years and then with a wider perspective, long, longer perspective over the 10 years, will be to, uh, first of all, use and federate what already exists at national level. Secondly, to uh, develop what uh, is missing yet from the existing uh, facilities and capabilities. And thirdly, once we have established a European capability, also to uh, to really focus and develop what exists already today in the area of international cooperation. We do cooperate extensively with the United States, but also with other space powers, uh, Russia, China, India, especially within the frame of uh, international organizations such as the UN COPUOS, for instance. We have ended right now the fifth European Conference on Space Debris. In fact, we have started off with the first one in 1993, and at that time we tried to understand the problem. In the following conferences, we try to find ways to uh, to cure the problem, to find a remedy on decreasing uh, the number of objects which we release into orbit. Um, now we found that after we understand this problem very thoroughly, it's not sufficient uh, to do debris mitigation on those assets to which we have direct access, that is operational satellites and operational upper stages. We have to do more in the future. We have to actively remove passive objects, dead satellite, dead upper stages from orbit in order to conserve the environment in the long run. This is a major finding of this conference and this is a major message from the conference.